So there is a question that has cropped up from my last video. Many of you have seen the video. I titled it, How PlayStation Inadvertently Boosted Xbox's Rise to Dominance. Now, that video was intended to hear from a lot of people. You know, I named these, you know, I, I titled these videos in the most, you know, click worthy way as I possibly can. It's a YouTube thing. But this is actually the reality. It's not like I'm making it up. I mean, for real, if you think about it, if Xbox, uh, so if PlayStation had not gone too strong armed with the Bethesda games, Xbox will probably not have responded in the way they did by buying it. I think that was pretty much the catalyst. So PlayStation created the world that we're in. So shout out to PlayStation for giving Xbox the W when it came to Activision. Activision got confident that they could rely on PlayStation, who had, you know, basically taken over the money hiding from Xbox for years. And so Activision went to Xbox and said, give us a bigger, you know, bigger profit share, else we take Activision away from you. So Xbox continued to pay that fee, but, you know, a little bit of that kind of a weird, you know, thing. They were in their feelings about it, I think, over, uh, you know, the years. And so when the opportunity showed up to buy Activision, they clipped it from PlayStation's, you know, under PlayStation's nose. So again, shout out to PlayStation for handing Xbox that W. When Xbox was making Game Pass as a service and doing cloud and providing a PC, you know, interface, what did PlayStation do? They decided to keep money hatting and stuck with their console. They did not respond. They did not improve PlayStation Now. They did not improve those services that they actually even kicked off before Xbox. So they handed Xbox that W was free for the most part. But someone brought a comment and said, you know, I don't know how this is this domination thing, but because the console numbers don't lie. And this is pretty much, you know, kind of an ode to the, well, PlayStation is selling more consoles, so I don't see how Xbox dominates them. Now, again, the best place for us to take a look at this whole thing from is we need to look at the console sales, you know, perspective. So first of all, when consoles are selling, they're selling at a loss. PlayStation had its 399 digital PS5 version being offset its losses by PS4s that were sold at the time. This was a 2021 article. They had just advertised that the 499 PS5 was no longer selling at a loss. How this was selling at a profit or even breaking even, we don't really know. Maybe after so many units, but it seems the PS4 was playing a hand in helping the 399 digital PS5. Xbox loses $200 at least on the Series X's and about $100 on the Series S. So console sales are not really the strongest metric, and you can tell because when PlayStation was writing this document about how they've basically been leapfrogged over by Xbox, they didn't seem to write that their or they didn't seem to factor in that their higher console sales was a factor in stopping what Xbox was already becoming or had already become. If it was, you would have seen it in either this document or all the other relating documents that they wrote about. What they did write, nonetheless, was exactly how Xbox seemed to have made up for that their you know lower position in the console numbers by moving to and follow me in this line here where it says, Activision provides incredibly strategic value across live service games, scaling mobile and PC storefront, and then they said Microsoft can supply multi-game subscription fifty percent, console games fifty percent, PC sixty percent. Pretty much this number here was indicating that Microsoft had pretty much found a way to supply its games to an audience at about the 60% piece of its puzzle. So we used to say Microsoft is no longer dependent on console. They actually still are. It's just now become a piece. It's no longer the 100%. It hadn't been since 2016, actually. It's just that people just kind of, you know, slept on the PC platform because for the most part, most PlayStation fans, and sorry to say as a PlayStation fan myself, live in a bubble you didn't know that the pc was kind of a thing you didn't know it was an interesting platform you didn't know it was a platform that would probably one day basically hold all the playstation games in its library even now when i keep telling people that hey the so-called day and date that everybody is talking about is being eroded by playstation themselves with a game like lego horizon adventures what i get is a thousand different excuses why lego basically bullied they didn't they wouldn't say bullied but why Lego wanted it, so that's why PlayStation is doing it. Not knowing that in front of them as well, they've already launched two day one launches for PC in the most recent few months. Concord and Helldivers and Until Dawn, which is a remake, they've launched all slews of them just at the same time. And most PlayStation fans are still kind of not picking up that this whole thing is changing. So again, when you say you don't see the dominance, again, the hardware boxes sitting there don't really mean much until software is purchased on them or subscription services. Of which, in terms of software being purchased, Xbox has found a way to pretty much leapfrog over that, not having to worry about eating $200 in terms of a loss on each console sold, 
but instead going straight and just collecting 70% from Steam, 18% in some cases from Epic Games, depending on where they put the platform, or 100% of revenue on their own Xbox own platform, which is something that many people are not considering. They created a storefront. And I've said this, PlayStation needs to create a storefront. Now, they're going to get, you know, joked out of business. But if they offer something that gives players a good, you know, value proposition, if they're pro-consumer, which is very hard to imagine PlayStation in that stance right now. I mean, not even on PC with the PSN and all the nonsense they're doing, negating countries. It's going to be hard for them to actually come in and make any friends on this platform. And so, again... I still think they should give it a shot nonetheless. I mean, you know, Ubisoft has a, a PC storefront. So, I mean, who's to say PlayStation can't, you know, do something there? But again, you know, I digress. This is where they leapfrogged and they went around them. So if you're coming into this conversation here on the Video Game Fight School channel, you're going to hear us say things like this. And we're not just pulling it out of thin air. I'm not really used to just saying, you know, stuff that, you know, is without you know, tagging it as a hypothesis or a theory. And if I say anything that is, you know, hypothetical and I don't point it out, please call me out in the comment section. I mean, I really don't need the dragging for necessary stuff. So let me know and say, hey, bro, where are your sources, man? Somebody one day yelled at me and said, put your sources in the description and shout out to you. I want to make sure that we're doing that because this is a, a very important conversation for anybody who deems uh, fit to actually go into it. So right now, because of that leap, Having Activision has just changed the game because Activision was pretty much the biggest third party money maker on PlayStation and having all of that come into Xbox's ecosystem and looking to see that, oh, wow, even if somewhere, somehow Xbox is positioned to hold on to this asset without sharing any of the games, they can still make it without us. They can. I mean, do you guys not remember? If you don't remember, Bobby Kotick was going to take away Activision uh, take away Call of Duty from Xbox, pretty much signaling that PC and PlayStation alone could carry it. So, <laughs> I mean, think about it right now. With it being capable of being played on PC, even with Steam now being in the in the running, it's a very interesting proposition nonetheless. Not saying that they're going to give up PlayStation because that would be a huge hit on the wallet of, you know, the Call of Duty franchise. But again, PlayStation seemed like they were very concerned about this. And this is where the domination came in. It's not much. PlayStation doesn't have an ex, you know. PlayStation doesn't have so much of a complex business model that you can actually start looking for other things. They've just basically gotten smoked. And for those of you who didn't even think about it, check about the check this out. Subscription, Microsoft's comprehensive ecosystem coupled with exclusivity creates dominance. So basically, PlayStation is saying that if if Microsoft is going for the exclusivity play with what they have in their ecosystem. PlayStation is saying it themselves. I don't know why you guys say you don't see it. Okay, maybe I didn't read that part of the document to you. It's my bad. I'm sorry. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate you guys so much. Peace out.